eh, siempre me ha gustado aprender de todo lo que puedo. Y bueno, ustedes ya conocen mi historia, este, yo creo que todos, entonces eso ya no se las voy a contar. Ah, sí, se la Híjole, se me un Bueno, se las voy a contar brevemente. Eh, para los que no me conocen, mi nombre es Verónica Ampuria. Eh, yo empecé a trabajar muy chica, eh, iba a la universidad y trabajaba. Entonces iba a clase de 7 a 9, me iba a trabajar de 9 a 6 y regresaba a la universidad de 6 a 10. Entonces, como empecé a los 18 años, para los 20 años ya tenía como un puesto muy importante y empecé a tener una carrera muy exitosa en corporativos muy grandes. Después me casé, tengo tres hijos y seguí trabajando, siempre lograba negociar que pudiera yo trabajar en la mañana en la oficina y en la tarde desde mi casa y porque no quería dejar a mis hijos entonces siempre logré esta negociación ¿y qué pasa? conforme te va yendo mejor en la vida corporativa empiezas a tener que tomar decisiones que yo les llamo decisiones de vida si haces esto te ve mucho mejor pero quizá ese eso va en contra de quien tú eres entonces me encontré en esta disyuntiva. Si tomaba la decisión de seguir adelante siendo y convirtiéndome en la persona que no soy y en la que no me quiero convertir, aprendiendo a jugar el juego corporativo, al cual siempre me negué jugar, siempre fui la rebelde, la que no quería, la que no obedecía, o salirme y dedicarme a otra cosa. Mis papás siempre me dijeron que yo no estaba diseñada para obedecer y para tener un trabajo, y desde hace mucho me habían insistido en que yo tenía que construir algo mío. Y no les hice caso porque me iba muy bien. Y siempre empezar algo de cero, pues da bastante miedo. ¿no? Eh, llego a este punto donde tengo que decidir. Y decido salir. Y mi mamá me insiste mucho en que viene en un avión y se encuentra con la hija de Luis Torres, con la Luis Torres. Están sentadas juntas en el avión y Lulu empieza, la vida, empieza a platicar eh, sobre mí y sobre cómo Lulu Torres ha sido tan exitosa, etcétera, etcétera. Llega mi mamá, se baja del avión y lo primero que hace es marcar. Y me dice, ¿qué tienes que escuchar esto? Dije, no, 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 bueno, mira, tu filtro de agua ese que tienes en tu casa, que te vendió Paulina, Mira, yo quiero mucho a Paulina porque fuimos a la universidad juntas, pero no hay manera que yo voy a tomar esa agua que solo le faltan las tortugas. Y yo iba a su casa y prefería tomar una Coca-Cola que esa agua porque me daba asco, estoy bastante asqueroso. Entonces, le dije, bueno, lo voy a escuchar porque es Paulina y porque tú me lo estás diciendo. Pero nada más una hora. Ok. Entonces fue para abrir mi casa y llega con el filtro de agua y no me acuerdo qué más cosas le daba a Y me empieza a enseñar los productos y yo le decía, hijo, esto de los productos mágicos a mí no me funciona. Yo no creo en que si pongo un aire se le van a quitar las alergias. Y pasó los productos a la parte del negocio. Entonces cuando vi el plan de compensación empezó a hacer sentido. Y cuando me, me contó la historia de su mamá, me hizo más sentido. Y dije, si una señora ha podido lograr esta transición, hay algo que yo no estoy bien, pero lo tengo que probar. Entonces me inscribí, compré uno de cada cosa, porque soy analítica, escéptica. Si fuera postro, sería Santo Tomás. Yo tengo que ver y probar que es real. Entonces, Compré el aire y se lo puse a ver que no tenía alergias. Compré el sistema de sueño y se lo puse a ver que no dormía bien. El agua para toda la casa, yo tenía gastritis, colitis, dormitis, todos los tipis. Porque dormía tres horas. Dormía a mis hijos y me seguía trabajando. Y como soy una picada, me seguía hasta las tres de la mañana para despertar a las seis. Y que según yo dormía perfecto. Me tardé un año probar el sistema de sueño porque yo decía, por favor, esa cosa que te va a hacer, yo duermo perfecto. Pero siempre me parecía de mal humor, más que la que no se da cuenta era yo, pero todos los demás sabían que era sí. Entonces decidí probar el sistema de sueño y me di cuenta que me parecía de buenas. Y me di cuenta que no dormía bien. 
Y poco a poco me fui enamorando de los productos y soy una persona que no me gusta vender. Entonces, la tenía muy fácil. No creía en el negocio, no creía en los productos y no me gusta vender. Ustedes creen que soy un perfil para desarrollar de esto. Era como imposible. Me di cuenta que empecé a compartir lo que había sucedido en mi casa, con las alergias, con él, conmigo, con el estómago. Y entonces la gente me empezaba a pedir producto. Yo no lo vendía, yo compartía y me lo pedían y me decían, ah, sí, sí, esto sí funciona. Pero si yo te tengo que ir a vender para convencerte que hagas algo que probablemente no quieres hacer, yo no quiero. Yo quiero que me hables y estés súper feliz de tener lo que yo te comparto. Pero si es una carga, no me interesa. Entonces, empecé a compartir el negocio y empecé a compartir los productos. Y empecé a subir el nivel. A mí me dijeron, si llegas a la plata, te brindas. Ah, no, bueno, ¿cómo se llama la plata? Rapidito, porque a mí no me pasa nada. Pero ni el periférico. Entonces, llegué a la plata. Y de ahí, mi negocio empezó a aplicarse. Y de ahí, empecé a ver el crecimiento exponencial. Y tuve la visión de ver qué podría suceder año, 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 año. Y cada vez fui creyendo más y volviendo más apasionada. Empecé aprendiendo de Paulina Guillermo muchísimo. Empecé aprendiendo de Gloria Gaba. Después de todo, Carmen me ayudó a llegar a Platino. Hablaba yo con él dos veces a la semana. Y los martes eran increíble, pero los jueves era de perro. Porque de martes a jueves yo tenía que tener una historia nueva resultados nuevos y a veces se van miércoles de 8 de la noche y yo no tenía nada que decirle para que jueves entonces los miércoles en la noche era como en el teléfono como loquita y viendo o dando su seguimiento porque yo tenía que tener una historia nueva y gracias a esa paciencia que tuvo conmigo y, y ese seguimiento que tuvimos llegué a la tienda entonces fui a la convención de Orlando y yo soy una persona que me gusta observar. Y por alguna razón, como que sé leer a la gente de buenos sobrevivir. Y conocí a Mike de Xerox. Y entonces yo observaba y observaba y observaba lo que hacía. Y, este, y entendí, sin conocerlo, como su forma de trabajar. Entonces regresé a México y dije: Pues o sea, así yo lo voy a buscar. Porque yo quiero entender cómo lo ha hecho él. Ya entendí cómo lo ha hecho Paulina, ya entendí cómo lo ha hecho Gloria, ya entendí cómo lo hizo Bob. Quiero entender cómo lo ha hecho él. Y le mandé un mail. Entonces empezamos a tener comunicación y me empezó a dar mentoría. Tuvimos una sesión con mi grupo, tenemos un grupo que nos llamamos los Diamantes Reales, que somos las de mi organización que tenemos muy claro que queremos llegar a Diamante Real. Entonces tuvimos una sesión por Skype con Mike y fue un momento, no, no sé si se les ha pasado que hay momentos en su vida que es como si les partiera un rayo. Cuando acabó esa llamada, eh, toda la mesa se quedó como en un silencio prolongado y entonces les dije, es que yo quiero que venga a México. Entonces eh, le pedí que viniera. ¿Y qué es lo que vimos nosotros? Vimos una manera muy distinta de explicar el negocio. Vimos una manera de distinta de, de decir las cosas. Una pasión impecable. Y entonces le pedimos que viniera a México a compartir con todos nosotros lo que él hace. Porque lo hace de una manera muy distinta. Y para nosotros como equipo es un gran honor que haya aceptado la invitación tanto de Luis Casuga para ir al Seminario Diamante, como la nuestra para venir a México a conocernos después de 23 años que no ha venido. Es una persona inteligente, es una persona que ya lo van a ver cómo explica las cosas. Yo la verdad he escuchado muchas, muchas presentaciones de Nikken, pero la manera como él lo hace es verdaderamente especial. Y es un privilegio tenerlo aquí, porque además es un extraordinario ser humano. Entonces, quiero que me ayuden a darle la bienvenida a Michael Timucho, diamante que hay en la Real de México.
Buenos dias. Thank you to Veronica for the invitation. Um, I don't know why it's been 23 years that I've not been here. But, um, but there was a time when I was here quite a bit. In fact, I rented an apartment in Polanco for six months. Of, of those six months, I was in Mexico five of those months, working to launch and initiate Mexico in 1993 when Nikon decided that it was going to open the doors in Mexico. And um, thanks to Veronica and her insistence and just reaching out to me, the timing was right for me to come back and to help spread the message of Nikon in my own unique way, I guess. And uh, I wanted to be sure that Luis Casuga was okay with that because I have to tell you, he is one of the if not, in my opinion, the best managing director of Nikon worldwide. Yeah. He is absolutely an extraordinary manager. <laughs> I very much respect what he has done in uh, helping to implement systems and trainings and what we talk about is the rhythm of the business or the rhythm of Nikon, which I believe is a critical component to success on a large scale and and he's done a fantastic job Latin America you guys are responsible for the greatest light in Nikon in the world right now so it's it's exciting to be here for me to not just to give you what I have to give you but to receive from you what you are giving the world and um, so thank you to Veronica and her helpers for organizing three amazing events in such short notice so if there was a little bit of confusion at the door and so forth please forgive them because they really had a lot of work to do in just two months to make all of this happen so thank you let's give them a hand i have two presentations today this one called aligning with success and the one after the break called the law of attraction now my favorite presentation is the law of attraction so I'm gonna save that I need to build my energy up a little bit for that one because that is in fact the most important thing I could ever share with any other human being including my own children so I'll share that later and I know many of us talk about it think about it maybe have heard different things about the law of attraction but I've had some of the best mentoring in the world when it comes to this subject I've had some personal experience and I think I'm equipped to share that information with you. By the way, I went to the pyramids, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? It was the day before yesterday. I went to the pyramids, so I got a little bit of energy from the pyramids going on in here, so it's kind of funky. Um, I also want to acknowledge another special guest that I invited here today because 20 years ago I could not have done what I did in helping Nikan get started if it wasn't for her help. She was Nikan's secretary to help Nikan operations get started, but I completely sequestered her and made her my own secretary. And she was so, so instrumental in all of the, the activities of those first months to help me really get familiar with the culture, the people, to exchange, because I didn't speak Spanish, but she did for me on so many occasions, translations and so forth. We had many uh, pleasant experiences, including fun outside of the business. I still remember talk about the Hacienda, where we went to your grandfather's 75th birthday. It was incredible. So please help me welcome back to the, to the Nikan family here, Pilar Guerra. Can you hear me and understand me okay? Yes. 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 Now, 
notice this is a this is sort of a compass needle. You know how in the in the sailors they have compasses, and this one's pointed to true north. I use this symbology for a reason. That's this presentation is called aligning with success. Alignment. It's a very important word. When we are not aligned with our true self, with our true feelings, we are at odds with ourselves. We create stress within ourselves. And I believe that every human being was born for a very specific reason, with, a, uh, with the capabilities of magnificence. And I believe that we were born into a world that has suppressed our abilities and has educated us contrary to what is actually our natural being, our natural state of being. And so a lot of our education teaches us things that over time become quite irrelevant. A lot of our education teaches us things to believe that are not really true. And I'm talking about education from all kinds, not just the ones at school. And I've been on a, a journey to help people expand their awareness so that they can move forward in life with a greater sense of purpose and a greater alignment to their true natural state. See, we're supposed to be healthy. It's actually our natural state. But we do things, and we're surrounded by energies that rob us of this natural state. And so we're always out of balance, trying to stay in balance, and there's distress. But beyond that, I've also, my background is aerospace engineering. And that was a long, long time ago. But it did give me an understanding that helped me to really appreciate the dynamics of the law of attraction, the dynamics of cause and effect, the dynamics of the, the physical makeup of this world and of our being, and how we actually live in a world that is influenced by thought, that our thought impacts the physical world. Even if you're just thinking it quietly in your own mind, you're actually creating a result that you may not be aware of. And so there is a state of being when you are in perfect alignment with your true divine self. Now there's a passage in the Bible that Jesus is supposedly said, and he said, Know ye not that ye are gods? Wow. That's a pretty big statement. I never heard that from the Catholic Church, by the way. I heard that from reading it. Know ye not that ye are gods. So what's he saying, this son of God? What are you? What are you made of? What is, what is your possibilities? And so there is within us a possibility of incredible success. Success on all levels, physical, <laughs> mental, emotional, financial. There's within us our true north, that alignment with our true nature, which is to be prosperous and successful and healthy. This is the divine nature of your makeup. This is the true north of who you are. And when you're off purpose, when you're out of alignment, this is when you feel stress. This is where you feel unhappiness and unrest and so forth. So what I'm going to give you today is a, some information about how to bring a new level of purpose and alignment to how you approach your weekend business. In fact, I think that this information could transform your business if you're serious about success. Now I know everybody has their own definition of success, but Nikon is a vehicle that can allow you to move down that path to any level you want. You know, you can be a successful silver in Nikon and be very happy being a successful silver. Or you could be a successful platinum 
or a successful royal diamond. <coughs> but if you could be any of those, which would you choose to be? Yeah, I think you would probably choose to be royal diamond. Now, some of you are still thinking, well, I don't know. That seems like a mountain and a half. And I don't know if I have it in me. And I don't know if I have the willpower. And I don't know if I have the skills. And I don't know, and I don't know, and I don't know. Ye, who is God, telling me you don't know. That you don't think you have it in you. Well, I know you have it in you. So, the question is not whether you are capable. The question is whether you make the decision. That's it. Because everything you've ever done in life started with a decision. You may not accept that, but if you really challenge yourself and look at the things that you've created in your life, you'll find that on some level, you made a decision. And then, things happen. Think about it. Most people, they buy a house. Do they have the money to buy the house? No. But they make a decision. And then what follows? They find the money. Whether it's through a bank or whatever. So, a lot of people make, in life, don't make decisions because they think they don't have what they need. Oh, I can't take a vacation. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. Well, you have the money and the time, and you'll find the money and the time only when you make the decision. Until then, you excuse yourself of drawing to you the money and the time. And so imagine that. People go through life. This is what they want. Oh, I so want that. And they're going through life. Now they're in their 20s. Now they're in their 30s. Now they're in their 40s, and they want. It's always in front of them. So what I'd like to help you today is realize your dreams. Give you the tools that I've learned over the years that can help you accelerate your, your success rate. So what we need to do is bring alignment. There's a version of you that's already a royal diamond. Now, think about that for a minute. There is a version of you that is already a royal diamond. Now, we just have to align ourselves with the spirit and the vibration of that version of you. And then the world will organize, organize itself to make it so. So everything in your life is currently an expression of your thoughts, your beliefs, your alignment. If you want to shift something, you just shift it. And then the world organizes around that. So for instance, I want to go on a vacation, but I'm not going on a vacation because I haven't made the decision. I make the decision I'm going on a vacation, and now the world will organize itself. My thoughts will change, my behavior will change, people will, re will re uh, react differently, and circumstances will appear that would never have appeared until I made that choice. And then I draw to me the circumstances, and then guess what? I'm on a vacation. That's how it works, not some of the time, all of the time. So currently, right now, there is a version of you that is a royal diamond. But maybe you're sitting over here as a new senior or a, district, a distributor or a silver, and that royal diamond seems so far away. But have you actually made a decision? Probably not. Maybe the only decision you made was to go silver, if you're a silver. And then you're a silver saying, gosh, I don't know why I'm not going further. Maybe you didn't make a decision to go further. So <clears throat> aligning with success is about learning how to make decisions and choices, then aligning with that and thinking in those terms and speaking in those terms. You know what happens when you start to make decisions like, I am a royal diamond? You start to talk like a royal diamond. 
you start to think like a royal diamond. You start to interact with the royal diamonds because you see yourself as one. And guess what starts to happen? Others see you as that. Others are attracted to you and want to be part of your business. And then what happens? You achieve royal diamond. That's what happens. And you know the funny thing about it? You will not know how to do it until you are there being recognized as Royal Diamond and you look back and say, oh, that's how I did it. And that's always the way it is. You will never know how until it's done. But the only way it's ever going to get done is if you make a decision to do it. And then things will appear to you. The world opens up to you. Information opens up to you. I'll give you an example of this. Some of you, how many of you were here yesterday and heard me speak? Okay. Well, you might be bored with some of this because it's a repeat. But you might hear something that you didn't hear yesterday. Because I might say something I didn't say yesterday. That's usually how it happens. Anyway. Let's say we stood outside at the front of this building and I said to you, I want you to count in the next hour how many cars that pass are red in color. Got it? How many cars are red? So you stand out front and you count. At the end of the hour, I come to you and say, okay, how many cars are red that passed by here in the last hour? You look at your sheet and say, Mike, there were 374 red cars. Cool. How many of them were blue? What do you mean? How many of them were blue? I don't know. But surely there were blue cars. Oh, I'm sure there were blue cars and black cars and white cars and green cars. But I wasn't looking for that. You only saw what you opened your mind to what you trained your mind to, what you focused your mind to, even though it was there, you didn't see it. And so, think about how many opportunities are there you don't see. How many people could join your business that you don't see because you're focused on what you're focused on instead of the Royal Diamond business. That would cause you to see the blue cars and not the red cars. So it's that simple. That's how the law of attraction works. We just simply have to train or tune our mind into the frequency, into that channel. You know what's really cool? In this room, there's music. Can you hear it? All the music? You can't hear it? There's music in this room. I promise you there's music in this room. If I had a radio and I tuned it to a channel, what's the favorite channel here in Mexico City? 91.3. Which is your R&B channel? Because that's what I'd be listening to. R&B, pop, contemporary. Okay, so let's say it's 93. So if we tune the radio to 93, this little box I have in my hand, what would I hear? I hear music. In this room, there's music. With the right device, tuned to the right frequency, I would hear music. And if I change the channel to another frequency, I would hear the music on that frequency. In this room, right here, right now. In this room, there's music. So think about your body and your mind is the radio. You just need to change the channel to a different frequency to hear and see the music on that channel. That's how it works. Let me get into this presentation because I'm going to save the rest of that discussion for later. So, how many of you were born? Just seeing if you're listening. We were all born, and of course, some of you saw me do this last night in the presentation. We were all born into a structure. You know, we all 
became part of somebody's family over here. And when we were born, we were given information as a child. There's a baby I heard in here. This baby right here is being fed information. And this baby doesn't know who it is yet. It's not conscious yet. It can't say, oh, I don't like that idea. It, it doesn't know that it likes or doesn't like. It just takes what it is given. And what does it want? Love, attention. And when it wants it, how do you know? Right? That's how it, that's how it talks. So as a child, we take, take, take information up till about the age of three. We don't have an identity. But around the age of three, we start to develop our own sense of self. And that's when we start to say, no. I don't want that. We start to create our, our own sense of self. So for a long time, this computer, this mind that can house an infinite number of bits of information, is listening and taking everything in. Every argument the parents have had, every moment of glory and joy, and every sad moment, and every everything that's right with the world, and everything that's wrong with the world is being taken in. What is right, what is wrong, according to the parents, according to the environment that the child is in. And then between the ages of three and six, it gets even more defined. You know, when I was a kid, if I, and I did this, that's how I know, I eat, would eat, I would start eating with my hand, with my left hand, my fork in my left hand. And my parents, they, no way, I'm not allowed to do that. They literally smacked my hand and said, we don't eat with our left hand. You eat with your right hand. The devil eats with his left hand. So my parents believe the devil eats with his left hand. That's why I'm not allowed to eat with my left hand. Even though my left hand is perfectly fine, it works. Think about all of the things we believe and have been taught to believe as children that are just random. Random beliefs handed from one generation to the next. No comprehension of whether it's the truth or not. Whether the world is flat or whether the world is round. At one point we would argue it was flat, today we argue it's round. It never changed. All that changed is what we believe to be true. But boy did the world change when we believed it was round. Boy did we start inventing things like crazy when we believed it was round. Like vacations around the globe, satellites orbiting in space, and so forth. These possibilities opened up to us when we changed our belief from this to this. So the only thing that ever needs to shift is what we believe to be true. And the thing that I want to point out to you is not everything you believe is true is true. But because you believe it, you live as though it's true. So, when we believed the world was flat, it may as well have been. Because we lived as if it was flat. And so, these structures, religious, our, our um, families, culture, our social economic status. You know, have you ever been, I don't know if this was ever the case for you, but I got some really weird ideas about money. <clears throat> Think about all these ideas that you have within you about money. Did you ever hear your parents argue about money? So what did that, what's your interpretation of it, that information? How did that affect your belief system about money? <clears throat> that what? There's never enough. How about anybody here? There's never enough. How about this one? Well, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Right? Or, <clears throat> or they see somebody drive by in a nice car. And maybe they're, you know, under the quiet of their breath to say, oh, there goes a jerk. <laughs> so people with money are jerks. Or they're corrupt. Or they're... So you have some associations with money in your belief system. It's no wonder that you would behave in a way that maybe rejects money. Even though we know we need it. We want it. We don't want to admit it. But we have all these... Uh, ideas that are so not aligned with prosperity that we live under our potential. And these ideas are not even ours. These ideas are ideas that our parents gave us. 
or that our friends gave us, or that society gave us, or that religious organizations gave us. How many of you heard this one? The poor shall inherit the earth. You know? Because it seems to me that that's the way it works. Well, <clears throat> big difference between the meek and the poor. And the meek is not the weak. So, if we really start to challenge some of our beliefs, we'll understand why we behave in the way we behave. That may not be in alignment with what we really want. The life that we really want to live. And then, of course, according to our behavior, we have results. But how often are the results that we have in our life in alignment with the vision that we have of our life? When you were younger, what did you imagine your life would be like? Is it, is it like it is now? How come? How come your life is not what you imagined it to be, what you envisioned it to be? Because of our beliefs. Because what we had in our mind, which was joy, which was an expression of our true being, of abundance and prosperity and health and travel and family and friends and wonder, is now not reflected in our reality. So what do we do with our vision? Do we increase our vision? Do we hold our vision? Or do we start to shrink into the reality we are now living. And so, every day is the same. Nothing changes. So, we sink to the level of our belief system. We sink to the level of what has been our conditioning. Our results are now, our day-to-day -day is the same. But, <clears throat> if we had been taught the first question you have to ask yourself is, who am I? Who am I? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be given unto you. What the hell does that mean? Well, what's the kingdom of heaven? You have to die to go to heaven? How many of you believe you have to die to go to heaven? No. Really? Then why did Jesus say, the kingdom of heaven is within. Do I have to die to go within? No. So you don't have to die to go to heaven. Whoever taught you that is a fool. Or is trying to control you. So, if the kingdom of heaven is within, within, within my consciousness, within my being, is the state of perfection. And all I have to do is get in alignment with that. Seek that alignment first. And everything will be handed unto you. Everything that's in alignment with that. Which is health, abundance, prosperity, joy. These were really good instructions. How many of us are following them? And so, if we started with purpose. What is, who am I? What am I doing here? Let me see what that looks like in my life. You'd probably get to the same conclusion I got to. That I am a spiritual being living in a physical reality, a physical world. I am a spirit. You don't say I have a spirit. I am a spirit. My spirit lives before and after. The spirit is eternal. I am a spirit living in a physical world. The physical world is defined by my body. I'm a spirit living in a physical body. And my body allows me to experience the physical world. Without that, I'm not going to experience the physical world. Not in a physical way. So how important is it to keep my body healthy? How is important is it to be in alignment with health? The things that keep my body healthy. It's the vehicle through which I am able to live this life. And then there's my mind. I am not a mind. I have a mind. I have a body. I have a mind. I have a family. I have a role to play in society. And I have a need for the finances to make that all happen in the physical world. But I am a spirit. So my spirit is looking to expand because only when your spirit is expanding you feel joy and happiness. When you feel your spirit being suppressed, 
How do you feel? How do we feel when we feel our spirit being, our liberty being suppressed? Yeah, it's depressing, it's sad, it's it makes me angry. We want to fight back, we want to rebel. It makes you feel better. And so, is there information that you are subjected to every single day that is imposing itself on you, making you feel small, making you feel inferior, making you feel insecure about yourself? Do you have that information? Does that, do you feel that? Where do you see some of that information? Where? In the news. So, first lesson for all of you, turn off the news. I would swear till I'm dead that this thing called the media, which is controlled by five families in the world, is controlling how you think and suppressing your true identity and your true nature. So the media is controlled. It's simply how you are taught to believe and what you are taught to believe is true. For instance, what is a good looking woman? Open up a magazine. I've got young girls. I've got a, an eight, a 17 year old and a 16 year old. You know what they're taught? The Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> so they're taught information that's out of alignment with who they are and as long as they think they're supposed to be this person but they're really this person why can't they just be who they are magnificent you know, each and every one of us is magnificent. Each and every one of us is like a flower waiting to bloom into what we are meant to be. And there's no point in trying to be somebody else because that person's already there trying to be themselves. Just be yourself. And then the world will be an incredible collage of beauty. But we're so busy trying to be somebody else, we're losing sight of who we really are. We're not seeking the kingdom of heaven, which is within. Who am I? What am I really about? What is my life about? And so the idea of spirit seeking expansion is we want to experience greater awareness and greater abundance in each of these pillars of health. And if we can do it in a balanced way, it'll make it a lot e easier. So the, the story of Niken, the mission of Niken, the purpose of Niken to teach us and educate us to think in these terms is really the same as your own personal purpose. Which is why I have found such a congruency, such an alignment being involved with Nikan. Because the more spiritually aware I became, the more I dug into, because I had the luxury of time and money freedom, the more I pursued spiritual awareness, the more I came to the realization that the message of Nikan is one and the same as the message of the true gurus and the spiritual masters of eons. So, the goal is to redefine what success really is. It's not trying to be somebody else. It's not trying to look like somebody else or trying to live like somebody else. It's trying to find who are you and am I in alignment with that person and if I'm in the pursuit of that, that, that's the definition of success. The more I become aware of who I am and the more I move in the direction of that, the better off I am. And so if we look at those five pillars as the expression of who you are, that spirit within you trying to express itself in these five areas. The more abundant you are in those five areas, the more in alignment you are. So the reflection of your results tells you whether you're in alignment. If you were in your perfect natural state, you would be healthy, you would be aware, you would be abundant. So expressing ourselves and seeking to express ourselves more, humans being more concept, 
is really about alignment of purpose. And this definition of success, which is the best I've ever heard from Earl Nightingale, I got this from my mentor, Bob Proctor, who got this from his mentor, Earl Nightingale. And that's the definition right there. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So from now on, you and who you talk to and who you share information with. How many of you have children? Quite a few of you. These are lessons that are golden lessons for your kids. I don't ask my kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? I, that doesn't even matter. Probably the jobs or the occupations haven't even been invented yet. I ask them, how do you want to live when you grow up? So that they can reflect on what that life looks like and feels like. And so the alignment of purpose, this definition, is really about me moving toward an ideal. And as long as I'm moving toward that ideal, an ideal that is worthy of my life, that's a good day. Every day I'm taking steps toward a healthier body, a healthier mind, healthier family and relationships, healthier function in society, healthier finances. Every day I'm taking steps toward that is a good day. I am a success. If I stop moving, by this definition, I'm not a success. So it doesn't matter what I have. What I own, what I have, what I look like is not the definition of success. It's only what I'm moving towards and if I'm moving towards it. So now think of all the prospects you probably haven't talked to because you think they have it all. A lot of the people that I've met who have it all are spending almost all of their time juggling, trying to keep everything in the air. They are so busy trying to keep what they created in the air, they're stressed out of their mind. They spend most of their day putting out fires to keep what they have because they have no purpose except to try and hold on to what they they've created for themselves. But if you show them there's a path and you can help them get on that path, they'll find you'll lighten the load. They'll be happy. There's a lot of people that are in Nikan that don't need Nikan financially. The first person I ever introduced to Nikan did not need Nikan. Need Nikan. He was a multimillionaire. He didn't need it. But he did need something. He needed a purpose. He sold his company left over 700 employees behind, had millions of dollars in the bank, could do whatever he wanted. What did he want? He wanted to be with people. He wanted to help people, but he sold his company. He was no longer in that identity. He was no longer in that role. Now he was lost. And so when I showed him Nikan, yeah, it helped his knee. He got excited. But when he saw the whole picture, he realized this is his opportunity to help people. Not to make money. If you made money, that would be fine. But that wasn't the purpose. Everybody has their own purpose. Help them find their purpose. If you do that, Nikan is just a vehicle. People don't want Nikan. People don't want magnets. They don't want water. They don't want air. They don't want a sleep system. What they want is what it can provide. One of my mentors in Nikan, Larry Prophet, used to say, in North America, it, you got a, you got a, a, a um, hardware store here, right? Do you have a big hardware store? What is it called? Home Depot. Do you know if you go to Home Depot and you ask Home Depot, how many quarter-inch drill bits did you sell this year? They'll tell you. Thousands. Thousands. Quarter-inch drill bits. And funny is, funny thing is, Nobody who bought the quarter-inch drill bit actually wanted the quarter-inch drill bit. But they bought it. What is it they, they wanted? They wanted a quarter-inch hole. But they need the drill bit to make the hole. You see, people want this. They don't want magnets. But if the magnets can help them get that, they'll buy them. 
If the business can help them create balance in their finances, they'll join it. It's the mechanism, it's the vehicle. It's not the end in mind. So when we begin with the end in mind, when we're standing in front of a prospect, or when we're standing in front of a mirror, what is the end in mind? It's those five pillars and the movement towards them every single day. You know, if you're smoking cigarettes, are you moving toward a healthier body or away from a healthier body? So you know. This is a beautiful thing like a like a that north compass. It's true north. As long as you're moving in that direction, you had a good day. So keep track of that. Keep score. This exercise called Niken is about you being more. And if you're not taking the steps, how are you going to lead others? How are you going to lead others if you're not doing the things yourself? Who's going to be attracted to you if you yourself are not even in alignment with the purpose and the mission that we're teaching? So it's really important we understand that if you ever hope to be a success story in Nikan, is that you start to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. The world doesn't need more people lying to them or lying to themselves. What the world needs is leadership. And it's not the kind of leadership you find in the houses of politics down the road. Those people sold their soul to get where they're at most of the time. This is about people in your neighborhood. This is about members of a family showing the rest of the family what it looks like to be an on-purpose person to be a purpose-driven person, to be a person of integrity, a person moving in the direction towards their higher ideal, their higher expression of self. That's what it means to inspire. That's what it means to be a leader. And so challenge yourself to be that person. Your business will follow you. Your business will follow the person you are being. So. We want to start this process of creation, not going from where we started and then following the, uh, the sins of the Father, handing them down to the Son. What we want to do is we want to start creation from the end in mind. And so the end in mind is what's my purpose? And once I understand that, what is a vision that reflects that purpose? Vision is something you can see. That's why they call it vision. What does my life look like if I'm living on purpose. There's a thing that you'll learn to do. There's a thing that you'll learn to do at a, a curriculum called Humans Being More. How many of you have attended Humans Being More? Wow, not that many of you. Well, write that down. I need to get to the next Humans Being More immediately, as quickly as possible, find out when the next one is, find out where the next one is, and go. Of all the things that you're going to benefit from that experience, there is one thing in particular that could be the most profound and the most impactful on your life forevermore. It is so profound and so impactful, I educate my children on this long time ago. So my kids know when they want to create something, they have to first create a picture of it, an image of it. So even before I came on this trip, I asked my kids, because Bob Proctor asked me to tell them, create your report card for the year. So I told my children, I want to see your report card for this year. They're saying, what are you talking about? The year's not over yet. I said, no, 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 I'm not looking for the report card that the school is going to give you. I'm looking for the report card that you are going to give you. So I want to see this, the grades you're going to get in each of your classes. I want you to draw it out, and I want to see it. And then when I show it to me, I want you to put it on the mirror in your bathroom. So you can see it every day. Now, how many of you believe that advertising works? Everybody should believe it. That's why there's millions and millions of dollars spent on it every day. That's why you have all the billboards all over the city. Every time you're driving, 
those billboards are talking to you. Now, you may not see it on a conscious level, but guess what I know? If I put you into hypnosis and I ask you, tell me how many cars were blue, you could tell me. Because the subconscious mind, the eyes, saw everything. And the subconscious mind recorded what the conscious mind was not recording. The conscious mind was recording the red cars. But the subconscious mind saw everything. Everything. So in there is the answer. Within us, seek ye first the kingdom. Within us is everything. The answer is always there. So getting back to the idea of advertising. If advertising works because it's talking to your subconscious mind, and what we store up within our mind, whether it's conscious or unconscious, is what drives our behavior. We behave in accordance to our beliefs which are stored up in our mind. And so when you're being advertised to, you're being advertised to cause you to change your behavior in a certain way that helps promote a product or, or some type of service. And it works. That's why they do it. So now why not advertise to yourself? Why not do it to yourself? Advertise to yourself every single day by putting up pictures of what you want your life to look like. Put pictures that you collect from magazines as if it was you in that picture. As if it was your vacation that you were taking. And you can show people, that's where I went, and I went there, and I went there, and this is the swimming pool at our hotel, this is... You start to use advertising to your advantage by creating the thoughts and impressing those thoughts on your subconscious mind. In my kitchen, every morning when I go right next to the coffee maker, I have a fresh espresso coffee maker, right where I go, right on the wall, is what I call my life cycle plan. That's what we learn in the to create a life cycle plan. It's a vision board. It has pictures on it. Now, there's a lot of pictures. And you might think, yeah, but you, you've got to focus on one. How are you going to see anything? I don't have to see every, anything. I'm seeing everything. My subconscious mind is reminded every single morning of the life I'm creating. So... One of the things you can do in your journey toward alignment with success is start defining it. Take pictures of your life. Put them where you can see them regularly. And this is a, your personal vision, but guess what? Your business needs a vision too. Now, what do you mean by business? Am I not a Niken distributor? Are you? Here's another lesson. The moment you separate yourself from your business and give your business its own identity, you'll begin to transition into a business builder. Until then, you're still confused about what you're building. I'll give you an example. Some of you think, oh, Royal Diamond? Oh my God, that seems... Why? What are you comparing it to? You probably see a Royal Diamond and think, Oh, my, I, I could never be like that. I can't talk like they talk. I don't know what they know. They're so good. They're so polished. They're so this. They're so, I could never be that. Because you think you are your business. But if you are you, and I am me, and my business is my business, can I teach you how to build my business? I did it with my personality. You can do it with your personality. But the business that we have to create is the business that we have to create. Can I show you how to do it? Can I teach you how to do it? Of course I can. Think about that. You can actually build a Royal Diamond business. You don't have to be a Royal Diamond. It's a different concept. So that should cause a lot of people to go, whoo. Go ahead, do that right now. Whoo. Wow, that feels good. Let's do it again. Ooh. Wow. I can be me. I can be me and build a world diamond business. I like the thought of that. Yeah, you can. And if you put every royal diamond on stage 
and you gave them a real thorough interview, you'd find they're all unique. They're all different. They all have their own way of doing things and seeing things. But they're royal diamonds, so they must have done something the same. They built an organization that does a certain amount of volume, that's structured a certain way. <coughs> that's what we did that's the same so whatever it is that we did can be learned to be done you get to be you doing it so that's pretty important when it comes to the vision of your business but we still need a picture we have to see it that's what vision is so our business needs a picture so this vision creates the context for what we attract our vision creates a situation within ourselves, within our being, for what we attract. You know that radio station? What are we tuned to? So I'm asking you this question. What are you building? Are you building a doghouse or are you building a skyscraper? What are you doing here in Nikan? You probably never even thought about building something. You just probably thought, I'm doing Nikan. I hear that all the time. Oh, I'm, I'm doing my Nikan business. I'm doing. What does that mean? That's an employee mindset. I'm going to work and I'm doing things. No, we're in the process of building something. Do you want to enjoy the life and the lifestyle that this business can afford you? <coughs> then we need to learn what it is we're doing here. We're not doing Niken, we're building a Niken business. Yes, there's things we do, but what we're creating is a business. And if we're creating this business and we do it well, this business will pay us you, the CEO, it will pay you a good income that you can do whatever you, whatever you want to do with your life. And you can take a vacation and the business will still produce money. Because it's a business. It's not you. And so we need a vision for our business. Obviously, if you're building a doghouse, that means you're not attracting very many people. You don't really need very many people to build a doghouse. And you, you really don't need blueprints and you probably don't need engineering drawings and you probably don't need electronic you don't need much to build a doghouse so you're not going to attract much so if you are trying to go silver that's your ambition in Niken I'm going to go silver plata what are you going to attract you're going to attract what it takes to go silver and then you're going to be silver thinking why am I not going gold my people aren't doing anything Really, did you attract the people to go gold or did you attract the people to go silver? And so a lot of people are stuck at silver because they learned to do something and they had in their mind something and they attracted as a result of that, on that frequency, something called the silver business. And then they wonder why the silver business doesn't include people that are as equally ambitious as you. You didn't attract those people. You attracted the people to get you to silver. But I'll tell you something. With the same energy, you could have attracted the people that will help you build a royal diamond business. So when you hit silver, that's just one of many steps on the journey that you and those people are on. Nobody's getting stuck because we have a vision. We're creating something. We're working together. It takes a lot of people to build a skyscraper, but it only takes one person to build a doghouse. So what's the business you're building? Think about that. We have, in Niken, three different models to build the business. You can build a retail business. A retail business is where you're selling products, making money. I find that a lot of people, when they first get involved in network marketing, this is what they do. They think, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to sell products. And so you look for people to sell products to. You look for people who are hurting. You look for people who are suffering. That's what you're trained to. That's the, the red cars. I'm looking for people who are hurting. And so you're out there looking, and what do you attract? And what do you create? You create a, a sale. Because that's what you think it means to build the business. No, it's just what it 
means to build a retail business. Is that the business you want to build? How are you going to go Royal Diamond building a retail business? But is retail important? Yes, it's important. It's part of the process. But we've got to get our vision on the right station. So another option is you come into the business and you think, oh, I'm going to find a whole bunch of people who are going to sell the product for me. You actually hear them say that. Oh, so you mean what you do is you get people to sell the product for you? I hear that all the time. No. I don't get people to sell the product for me. They don't work for me. They work for themselves. And I help people build a business, which includes products that are sold and consumed. But that's not all it includes, because I have a better understanding of the business I'm building. But if you don't have that understanding, if you come from the world where, let's say you are an employer right now, you're a business owner right now, you have employees, you think that way. You think, let me get a bunch of employees to go and sell the products. And so maybe that's what you do. And you get to maybe platinum. You can get to platinum on that model. I'm going to build six silver ships. Boom, 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 boom. Go, sell. I'm here if you need me. Go. You can do that. And people do that. But is that the full potential of this vehicle. No, it's not. But I can understand if you come from an employee background, you're an employee, selling the product is a natural condition of being an employee. If you come from a business background where you're used to having employees, finding people to sell the products is your natural way of thinking. So when you get involved in Niken, you recreate your thinking in Niken. And then you wonder why it's not really working the way you thought it would work. You see these royal diamonds, all the freedom and time and money and so forth, and you wonder, wait a minute, I, I'm doing, I'm working hard, but it's, it's not, vision's got to change. This is the networking vision. The networking vision is about empowering people, not teaching people how to sell, empowering them. Teaching them how to walk the walk, talk the talk, and attract people of like mind. So where does it begin? Who does it begin with? It begins with you. When you look in the mirror, who are you seeing? Because you want to attract people like you, who have a picture in their mind of a better life. These people who will join your team are not driven by the same motives as people who are just looking to make a few dollars here and there. The people who will help you build a Royal Diamond business, they're leaders. They are driven by the desire and the need and the hunger to feel freedom. They are not driven by the need to feel secure. Oh, I need to feel secure because, oh, I'm so afraid. I listen to the news. And, I, and they tell me the world is a terrible place and it's so awful and there's so much bad things happening that I feel terribly insecure. I, I don't even want to leave home. I don't want my children to leave home. Gosh, I feel so insecure. Who are you going to turn into if that's what you're allowing yourself to listen to and, and adopt? What about if you believe that for every crime that's out there happening right now, there's a thousand people doing something good for somebody else. What if you believe that? You don't attract crime, you don't attract that stuff into your sphere of influence, you attract goodness, because you are tuned to the station called, Man, I Rock. So, Building a network marketing business is about attracting people who really want a better life and want more out of life. And maybe they don't really understand what that means, but that's your job. Your job is to show them that in Niken, with the Niken vehicle, that better life is possible. It begins with a definition of what is success, balancing the five pillars. The pursuit of this is our worthy ideal. This is our story. And if they like that story, show them the products that can help them get that. Show them the business that can help them create the finances. You see how one leads to the other naturally? 
Robert Kiyosaki talks about this in his book, Cash Flow Quadrants. It's a great book. I encourage you to get it. Because essentially, you're either approaching this business as an employee, as a business owner, or as a, as a business builder. And that's what my goal is, to help you go from being an E or an S to a B quadrant person, a business builder who thinks about attracting people with a vision, helping them to find their own vision, and showing them how he can as a vehicle that can make that vision a reality. So, I need to gauge time because we started late. No, give me a, uh, how much time? Before we go into a break. So, in our business, I'm going to say this really quickly because this is not as critical a point. In our business, we earn income three different kinds of cash flows. The first cash flow is active income. This is money you earn from your personal activities. Sponsoring people, selling the products, you earn an income. But then, when you teach people how to duplicate, you're going to create a huge amount of income as a result of them duplicating it. But notice it's a curve. It's not, oh, I'm going to go to the moon with this. No, this is business. People recruit for a while, then they don't. And then maybe they'll recruit again, and maybe they won't. And so there's these things, but as these waves are being duplicated, it creates this big wave. And that's where you can create an organization and a huge income. In my peak, my biggest check in Nikon was just over $200,000 for the month. Pretty cool, huh? Actually, I think it was $300,000. $302,000. So, it can peak really, really high, but then it reaches a level where it's matured, and that's your passive residual income. Now, Nikan in the globe, in the world right now, is on, a, is on a tear, it's on a mission to educate the field leaders and the consultants around the world that we want to build a business that's, not, that's sustainable, that goes on and on and on in perpetuity. And recruiting is not something you do all the time. But if in the process of recruiting we can find some customers, and we can treat those customers with respect. And we give those customers access to the products at a good price. And they keep coming back, maybe with an auto ship program. Then over time, we should be building a larger customer base. Even though consultants come and go, that happens. A consultant will be a consultant, and then they won't be. But we don't want to lose them as a customer. So technically speaking, Everybody should remain a customer if we treat them well. So even though we will only have a certain amount of business builders at any time, and that's maybe growing slowly, we will surely have a growing base of customers over time forevermore. And that creates the most exciting income. That's our passive income stream from our customers just using the products. So that's a visual. I want you to see this because right now we're the vision component of our business. And I believe that your actions, your dialogue, what you talk about with people, what you share is based on what you see in your mind. The vision of what you're building in your mind. And maybe you never thought of it this way. You never thought, oh, hmm, passive income from people using the products. Ongoing. Yeah, I want to have more and more and more and more customers. I want my organization to have more and more customers. I want to know that if a, if a consultant decides not to build the business, they, we don't lose them as a customer. So that is an ongoing and growing concern, which gives our business longevity. Okay. So I introduced somebody to Nikan. Whether they're a customer or a consultant, I introduce them to Nikan and the Nikan Wellness Home and the Nikan Philosophy. What's going to happen in the lifetime of this customer? Which, a consultant is a customer, right? Aren't we our best customers? I know I've bought more Nikon products than anybody on my downline. I'm my best customer. But I want people to do what I do. I can't say, oh, you've got to do this, and I don't do it. 
What kind of integrity is that? Walk the walk. So I'm my best customer, always am. First in line to buy everything. So you start somebody with a wellness home, and it takes an initial startup cost. Maybe they buy a water unit, maybe they buy a sleep system, maybe they buy a pack. It starts the journey of the wellness home. But like it says at the bottom here, every wellness home has a beginning and no end. Customers for life. And so, what else is going to happen in this home? Well, <clears throat> how many of you take Nikon uh, uh, Nutritionals? Quite a few of you. If you're serious about this as a business, every hand in this room should go up. Here's why. If you're serious about success, our definition of success, then one of the pillars is your body. What does he can offer your body in order to help your body stay healthy? Jade Green's on. What else? Lactoferrin, Siaga, Caldez, Ostrodens, Jade. Okay, so, so does, does Nikon have consumables that you ingest and, give your, and nourish your body and keep your body young and healthy? Protect your body from the environment? Well, are you or are you not a Nikon wellness consultant? How serious are you about walking the walk? You want people to follow you, but you've got to lead. So if you are not taking auto ship, taking nutritionals on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, you're kidding yourself. You're not really walking the walk. So this is a matter of personal integrity. Are you on track? Are you on purpose? Are you in alignment with your success? So that's another aspect of the Nikan Wellness Home that creates ongoing cash flow, because as you duplicate that, that creates income. What else? How many of you have bought, let's say, Hope, Nikan Waterfall, and then think, you know what? I'm polluting my body through the skin every morning I take a shower. I need a shower head. I mean, you've done that. Yeah, you upgrade. Or maybe you bought a demo just to try the sleep system, but now you know, well, my husband hates the fact that I got this demo. And, you know, we gotta keep switching it, so we might as well get a queen for everybody, right? So we upgrade. That's another source of income that comes to us because of our deep and wellness home, if we're thinking about it. Then, <clears throat> how many of you have children? A lot of you have children? How do you feel about the fact that you're sleeping on an Ekan sleep system and they're not? <laughs> so there's going to be other people in your family who should be exposed to this and get the benefit of this. So there's more users. You know, my auto ship consumption is insane. I've got about $600 a month in auto ship because my kids are like clockwork. They are very, very diligent when it comes to the... My son, Michael, he has a thing called the concoction. Whenever, whenever he's feeling that he's, he's getting run down or he's got a cold coming on, he says, I did the concoction. It's a thing that he does three times a day. He mixes... He doesn't like the pills. He takes the, the, um, the, the, the lactoferrin. He takes the mushrooms. He takes the siaga. Mixes it, oh, and the uh, J. Green signs. Mixes it all up, it looks brown and awful, and then he takes it. It's the concoction. He does that three times a day to help boost the immune system and kill that. And it works. And he knows it works, that's why he does it, and I don't have to tell him. I don't have to tell him to do it. He does it himself. He's 13. So we're going to have additional users in that home, in that family's home. And then on top of that, does Nikan come out with new products? Yes. Yeah. So every time you or your customers or your downline learns that there's a new product, they're going to want the new product. So that creates additional cash flow. So that's how our business can continue to go on and on and on and on. So how many wellness homes do you want to create? <coughs> Millions. You have to have a vision for your company. How many wellness homes do you want to create? Now think about this. If I want to create 10 wellness homes, 
Do I need a lot of downline? For 10? I could do 10 myself. But what if I want to do 10 million? Now I need help. You see, if you have a vision for your company of creating 10 million wellness homes in the next five years, and you said that to somebody, they're going to say, first of all, what's a wellness home? I'm glad you asked. Can't wait to tell you. Let me show you. They're like, wow, this is cool. No, what's cool is I'm going to create 10 million of them, and I would love your help. And you and I can work together, partner together, and we can make a lot of money in the process. What do you think? You see, now, recruiting people, having a downline, is because of necessity. It's, this, it's, it's not for me. It's for what I need to create. I don't need to recruit people for me, for my self-aggrandizement. I'm an important person because I have this downline. Don't you know I'm important? No. I'm an important person because of what my company does for the world. And I have thousands of people helping me do it. That's true north. That's alignment. That's integrity. Now, how much money is enough money? There is no such thing. The more, the better. That means we've created more wellness homes. It's working again. All right. A little bit more. Check one, two, one, two, a little bit more. Hello, 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 hello. Can you all hear me back there? Okay, great. All right. So, all I was talking about so far is vision. I'm giving you pictures and thoughts for a reason. If you know what you're building, if you know this, this building that we're in right now, was at one point in time an idea in one person's mind. But for that person to make this happen, they had to communicate the idea. So they had to create pictures and images to help other people understand what they were building, and then they created drawings and so forth. And then they attracted the money and everything, and now we have this building. But it started with an idea in somebody's mind, turned into pictures. So right now I'm giving you ideas turned into pictures so you have a better understanding of your business, of this business that you're creating, so that you can communicate that with people. And they're going to hear that and understand the value of that, that this is not just some product that you're trying to sell to them, that there's something more. Because if you're going to attract leaders, leaders are inspired by vision. You have to have the vision, and you need to be able to communicate that with enthusiasm. <coughs> That's how you're going to attract them. That's what I've been really good at. I've been very, very good at communicating my vision and, and getting a clear picture of that vision. All right, so in your Niken compensation plan, there is a picture, there's a, there's a schedule of what the compensation plan looks like. But if we draw it as a picture, then what we see is this is the business I'm building. I'm looking for six partners. And I'm looking for a handful of customers that are going to be my customers for life. Six partners, or even three, because you can go to the top of the compensation plan with three. But I recommend six. From six platinums, three will go diamond and beyond. So that's a picture. I can see this. I know what I'm looking to build. I can draw this, I can show people where they fit in, I can show them how to create it for themselves. It's an image of Royal Diamond. So now, we have a picture. What do the results look like? How many of you have a GPS in your car? Perfect. So you know, when you want to go to the pyramids, what do you do? You punch in pyramids. It says, here's how we get there. Click, and now you start going, right? And it tells you, turn right here for 14 kilometers, exit here for 22 kilometers, and so forth. Now, 
You punch in the coordinates one time, right? One time. The destination, one time. Royal Diamond, one time. You don't punch in silver, gold, platinum, diamond. That's a very hard way of doing this. You punch in the coordinates one time, and then you start going in the direction that it guides you. Make a left, make a right. And if you want to stop along the way, because you need to use the bathroom or something, you can do that. Platinum. We're just cruising here for a little while. Now we're getting back on the journey. But we never lose sight of where we're going because we punched it in one time. What I'm saying, what I'm suggesting here is make a decision one time. Don't make a decision to do Nikan. Make a decision to build a Nikan Royal Diamond business. From that decision will come to you all the things you need. The guidance system will say, turn left here and you'll turn left there. It'll say, turn right here and you'll turn right there. And you'll be given instruction and guidance and you will attract the leaders of Nikan to help you. But you've got to make the decision. Nobody can make it for you. And then commit to it. So, <clears throat> the results in our business, well, in terms of your personal life, when you look at your five pillars, let's say your goal was weight loss. <clears throat> let's say you wanted to lose 15 pounds. That's your goal. Punch in the coordinates, 15 pounds. Now start moving in the direction. And along that way, you should be able to see if you're on track, right? So if this week I'm now three pounds heavier, uh-oh, something's wrong. I better correct the course, right? And so it allows us to correct the course. An airplane, an airplane is off course 97% of the journey. It's actually flying in the wrong direction. If the airplane didn't have a GPS and, a, and an autopilot, it wouldn't know what to do. The autopilot says, whoa, we're a little bit too far off course. Turn, okay, whoa, we're going back over here, whoa, and it's just, it's doing this the entire flight. A wind blows, whoa, we gotta get back over here. So autopilot, which is your, your journey of being an on-purpose person, will keep you guided, but you've gotta decide where you're going. You have to have a decision. Am I losing 15 pounds or not? And then autopilot say, okay, no, I'm not gonna have bread today. I'm gonna do the green, Jane Greenzymes a little bit more because I know that's alkalinity and it'll help shed some of the fat. <laughs> you will start doing things automatically. It's your autopilot will kick in once you make a decision. So trust that process that it will happen that way. You'll know when you're off course and you'll correct yourself. As long as you're committed to the, the, the journey. When it comes to your business, what do the results of your business look like? Well, there's our compensation plan. This is the milestones of our business. Essentially, we know we're in the right direction because we're going through silver, through gold, through platinum, through diamond. We know we're moving in the right direction as our team is doing the same. It's a guidance system. It gives us guidance. But the destination, we punched in one time. Okay? Now, here's one other piece of this one. When you look at this compensation plan, I don't like the fact that it's drawn this way. I wish it was drawn this way. Why? Because your mind right now says, I'm down here, and I got to go up there. Just like in the corporate world. I start at the bottom, and I got to work my way to the top, and it's so high up there. Instead of, I just need to go from here to here, from here to here. There's no climb involved. It's just movement. Movement in the right direction. I wish it was turned sideways because it would give you a better impression of the truth. And so here's the other thing. In this business, do you start at the bottom and work your way up? 
or think in pictures now. Or do I start, if I was drawing my organization, how do I draw it? I put me here, and then I draw my team, and then I draw their team. Am I starting from the bottom going up? Or am I starting from the top going down? Ah, that's a huge aha. Uh -huh. I'm not starting from the bottom going up. I'm starting from the top going down. So I'm actually a royal diamond in the making, finding my diamonds, helping my diamonds find their platinums, helping my platinums find their golds, helping my golds find their silvers, etc. That's what I'm doing. That's a very different way of thinking. I'm not looking for seniors. I'm looking for diamonds. Wow. Change the station. Diamonds. I'm on the hunt for diamonds. That is a totally different picture. That's a totally different energy. Now, if we had a, a driveway here that was made of gravel, you know, little stones, and I, and I had in my hand six, or maybe let's say three, three, two carat, flawless, F color, gorgeous diamonds. And there's the driveway, and I turned my back and I threw them in the gravel. So they're in here somewhere. And I said, they're yours if you want. Find them. What would you do? Would you pick up a stone, look at the stone, it's a stone. <laughs> it's still a stone. <laughs> Pressure! <laughs> it's still a stone. Is that what you do? No. Do you do that with your downline? Put it down and find the diamonds. What's really exciting about this exercise, when you understand that there are blue cars, and all you have to do is change the channel to the blue cars, you will start to see blue cars everywhere. You'll start to see what it looks like. I like to tell people, write five characteristics of the person you would like to be in business with. Five characteristics of the person you would really, really get excited about being in business with. Put them on a piece of paper. Carry that piece of paper in your purse. Carry that piece of paper in your wallet. Carry that piece of paper in your pocket. And look at it every now and then. Because what it's doing is it's reminding you what channel you're listening to. And your mind is going to see like a radar. You're going to see people in a different way. You're going to see leaders. They're just going to shine. You're going to be at a restaurant, all of a sudden somebody, the waiter, is going to be like, wow, this person's amazing. This person's exciting. I would love to have this person on my team. Sir, excuse me, come here. I would, you know, I couldn't help but notice how charismatic you are, how much attention you pay to make that, that person feel good. I, I love that about you. In fact, this may sound a little strange, but I have in my pocket a piece of paper that has the qualities of the person I would love to be in business with. And it, you strike me as someone who has a lot of these qualities. I know now's not a good time, you're working, I'm busy, I have to leave. But can we exchange information because I'd like to follow up with you and maybe see if there's a possibility that you and I can work together. If you had somebody say that to you, what would you say? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, I'm, I only work in blah, 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 blah. So they'd be very excited to hear from you. And then call, a, a day or two later, call back, say, I don't know if you remember me, we met at the restaurant, I was really impressed with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have been waiting for you to call for 24 hours. <laughs> They're excited to hear from you. Because you notice them. You notice something about them. Carry that piece of paper. So this is just about getting good at tuning the frequency, tuning the radio to the right channel. So, with respect to these diamonds, the good news is the hard part of making diamonds has been done for you. 
they were born. <laughs> now, all you have to do is find them. Find them. They're out there. They want what we have to offer. They just need somebody who can communicate it in a way they can appreciate it for them to say, this sounds like something to me. And that's all we got to get good at. So, um, let me see, do I want to talk about this? Okay, we want to do something that's duplicatable in our business so that we can teach others to do it. I've always been a strategist. I have always had a strategy when I approach the business. I think it's really important to know what to do with somebody when you sponsor them. Because if you don't know what to do with them, guess what? The subconscious mind says, I don't know what to do with these people, so you better not sponsor them. And you'll mess it up. You're consciously trying to sponsor them. The subconscious mind is saying, I don't know what to do with them, so don't sponsor them. Mess up. And then a person will say, you know, I, you know, I don't know if this is for me. I just, I, something's not feeling right. But if you were in a perfect integrity, you'd say, I know exactly what to do with you. I've been looking for you and waiting for you this entire time. Let me show you. Boom. And I show you my plan. This is what we're going to do. We're going to launch your business like an airplane off the ground. We're going to get you up there. If you had that confidence, if you had that plan, you would be much more attractive and you would be eager and you would be much more likely to attract somebody to work that plan with. So knowing what you're going to do with somebody is just as important as what are you doing. So here's what I call a launch plan. I'm going to do something that's going to create some partners and some customers. We're going to do something and as a result of that something, I've got some partners, I've got some customers. Now. I can take those partners and do that something with them. And now they've got some partners, they've got some customers. Then I'm going to do that something, teach that them to do the same thing, and boom, everybody does something. We've got some partners, we've got some customers. I have a process, I have a plan. It's duplicatable. So I like the 21 Club. I know you guys don't have exactly the 21 Club here. It's similar. I think you have to sponsor 10 people in. How many days? 90, 90 days. Too long. <laughs> 10 people, 30 days. What's the difference? If I said you had to do it, you would find a way to do it. If I said there's a million dollars if you do it, I'm sure you'd find a way to do it. Yeah, sure. So make the decision that that's what you're doing. 90 days is too long. For me, 90 days is too long. The longer you make something, I'll give an example. You tell somebody, um, we're going to do this for the next year. That's a big chunk of time in their mind. They got life and other things going on, children graduating, whatever. It's hard to get somebody to focus that long. 90 days, it's hard to get anybody to focus these days for more than two minutes. They're on their computer and they're, you know, they're driving and they're... It's hard to get anybody to focus anymore. So the longer we take, the harder it is. Let's just shorten it down. Let's do it in a week. Let's find your partners in one week. That's my strategy. My personal Mike DiMuccio wow. strategy is what I'm talking about, I do in a week. I don't do it in a month. Why? Because I have a week I can focus. I'll make that week available. They can do the same thing. And in that time, we can get a lot done. Compress time. Create an explosion of activity. That creates excitement. Think about a party. A party. If you're having a party, how many months out do you want to tell people you're having a party? Not very long, right? Three months from now? You're having a party? Three months? I don't even know if I'm going to be alive for you. Totally. But if you say to people, I'm having a party in a couple of weeks, so I want you to make a tie. See? It's more likely. And the activity is compressed. Things happen. So don't give yourself too much time. Shorten the time. So this example of the 21 Club is good because it helps you do something in a short period of time and that's going to create results. Now, here's the thing. You've been doing stuff right now, but you've been doing it with your frequency tuned to your station. 
If you did what you were doing to the my station, I bet you the results would be different. Do you think the results would be different? Oh yeah. Yeah. So even now, with what you know, you're going to get better results. But let's really, really become pros. Let's get so good at this launch strategy that we try it and try it over and over again until we know we know how to do what we're doing. We may, we may not have the best partner to do it, and we may not succeed completely, but I know if I have a plan, it's a lot better than not having a plan. And so this plan, this 21 Club, you can read about it, will, is a really good plan to help launch somebody in the business. And then we have something we can duplicate. So if I did that, <clears throat> let's say I started with, do you, guys, do you have a vital day pack here or something similar? A pack? Yes. No. No. Okay. Let's say 500 points. I'm going to encourage the people I sponsor to purchase with their, for their initial purchase of their wellness home, 500 points. I'm gonna ask them to do the same, I'm gonna ask the people they introduce me to to do the same. We have a strategy, the strategy is, this is how we're building the business. We're asking people to invest time, money, contacts. Here's the money part of it. Your products for your wellness home, 500 points minimum. That's what we're asking. You can do whatever you want. Nika doesn't ask you to do anything. We are asking you to join our team be a part of our business, be a part of our plan, and show you how to build a business that's duplicatable. So that's what we're saying is the, the benchmark. That's our plan. So we do that. Now this team has created minimally a, enough volume to go senior. So I now have a plan to launch somebody, boom, they become a senior. Can they duplicate that? They have three partners. Let's work with those partners to launch them. Boom, those three partners become seniors. You, what do you become? Executive. And we're moving in the right direction here. Now we have new partners on that team. What do we do? Boom, launch them. What do they do? They become senior. And now you achieve silver. You have executives behind you and seniors behind them. That's a 90 day plan that's really good and very duplicatable, and nobody's doing any more than anybody. Boom, a little launch plan, a little party, where we can introduce a bunch of people to this idea. Maybe in one night, maybe in three nights. You decide how you want to organize your time. Now, what if we did one little thing different? Instead of encouraging you to do $500, I'm gonna say, the sleep system, that's like, the thing. Add a water unit to that, and that's a really great start. So let's say we say that. So the sleep system and, and the water unit say. So now that's about 1,500 PV, at least. That's our benchmark, 1,500. Now that's what we talk about. We do the same work, only we raise the expectation a little bit about what people should do to get started. We have an idea of what you should do to get started. Who should be the first person to get started that way? You. You set the tone. You are the leader of the pack. So make a good decision for your business and then teach that decision. So now, if we did the same thing, we would advance in the compensation plan much faster. We go executive the first time, then when our team goes executive, we go silver, and then when they go silver, we go gold. That's a really good plan, a 90-day plan. That's my favorite plan. Golden 90 days. What's the destination? Royal Diamond. Royal Diamond. But we gotta get this plane off the ground. Then we level off, we trim, and then we start moving <coughs> toward our cruising altitude. Just like an airplane. It's full throttle. Get it off the ground. Get it up. When you get it to the gold rank, you level off. You see who's with me. We still here? Everybody here? You ready to move? Okay, let's go. That's how you do it. That's your plan. So from now on, get these airplanes off the ground. Help people get their airplane off the ground. Focus on a short period of time 
get the airplane off the ground. Guess what will happen? They'll put a paycheck in their pocket, they'll have some great experience, they'll learn the basics of the business, now you will have a partner that will go on building the business because they've learned how. Rather than you sit there and say, I have people that don't do anything. <laughs> have a plan. And that plan should get their business off the ground and at least up there to round goal. You should never throttle back until you're at least there because guess what? To create a silver is just about volume. But to create a gold is about helping people step into leadership. That's a different challenge. And leadership is about vision, the communication of vision. And so having a plan is part of the communication of vision. I have a plan. This is our plan. Let's work this plan. We don't need 10 plans, we just need one plan that we can duplicate time and time again. So we use our 21 club to launch. We do not stop until we hit that gold rank because that's part of the 90 day game plan. We have a 30 day, 90 day plan. And then when we're at gold, look around, see if you have a lot, if you've lost somebody, if they need a little bit of, you okay over there? You, you wanna, okay good. How about you, you good? All right, let's, let's go. Team, let's go, let's build something. Let's put a calendar of activities together. Let's have an event. Let's see if Mike DeGlucho is available. Maybe I'll be available on Skype. I don't know. <clears throat> so, we're at behavior. Time? Okay. So what are the behaviors if you're looking to lose weight? We already talked about it. You would eat right. You would eat right. You'd be more aware of what you're eating, what you're putting in your body. So give yourself those goals, because your body will then, and you, your conscious mind, will then start to work in that direction. But your business behavior is requiring of you, I'm gonna jump ahead here. Okay. In, in your business, you wear hats. When you're brand, brand, brand new, and you don't know anything, you're the apprentice. You're learning. Why are you learning? Don't learn for your sake. Learn for the sake of being able to teach. Because your goal in this business is not only to teach, but then to teach those people how to teach their people. That's when you are a mentor. So think of those roles. You want to be a good apprentice? Always. You want to always learn so that you can teach. What you're learning today, learn it to be able to teach it. Then, when you have somebody who you've taught it to, help them become good at teaching it. Because if you've helped them teach it, then you don't need to be the one teaching it. Now you're free. Now you can go somewhere else. And that's the key. It's not about learning. It's about applying what you've learned, teaching what you've learned, so that others can teach others. There's an, there's an expression of this. Feed a man for a day. Feed a man a fish. You feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. But teach a man how to teach others how to fish. You can feed the world. Okay, so much more profound. That's networking. That's the real gift of networking. Your leaders in Mexico who are brilliant, they're that way because they have you. And how did they end up having you? They must have done something right. They must have taught you and taught others how to do it. <clears throat> we call this the ABC, by the way. If you are not using an A every time you have a C, you're making a big error. Every time you have a prospect who is interested, you need to introduce them to an A. Every time, not sometime. Because that prospect is being taught by your behavior what the behavior is to be successful. And if you are not using a C, an A, 
they don't know that you're supposed to. And then they won't use you as an A, and you wonder why they're not doing anything. So the ABC is critical in every single situation. When you have somebody who's interested, get an A involved. Even though you know the answer, even though you may know what to say or what to do, you're best not to do it. Let the A do it. Because guess what they then learn? I don't have to know the answer. I just have to know an A. Do you know how that makes it possible? It makes it possible for anybody to do this business day one. Because they don't have to know the answer. They just have to know an A. And there's plenty of A's in this business. We got them. So make this very, very important in your business building behavior. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Teach it, do it, use it. All right, in our business, we've already talked a lot about this. There is the retail side of the business, the recruiting side of the business, and the residual <coughs> side of the business, which is essentially consumers, followed by consultants, followed by leaders. So we're going to have in our business consumers, customers. We're going to have consultants. And in that group of consultants, there's going to be emerging leaders. Now, if I know I, I'm going to have that and I want that, what should I look for? What should I be looking for if I want all those three? Yes. If I find a customer, do I, do I have a leader? Not necessarily. But if I have a leader, do I have a customer? Yes. Every time. If I find a distributor, a consultant, do I have a leader? Not necessarily. But if I find a leader, do I have consultants? That leader is going to bring thousands of them, or at least hundreds of them. So finding a leader is your first priority. Finding those diamonds is your first priority. But don't ignore the other two. Just a matter of priorities. Leaders is what you're looking for, but you'll happily accept a customer or a consultant who's not yet ready to step into the shoes of being a business builder. We love everybody. So, what is the conversation that I now have to have to attract my leader? Because attracting a customer is a simple conversation. It's just about the products. But if I'm going to attract leaders, I need to have more than that conversation. <coughs> so what is the conversation or conversations? And in what order? If, is a, if a leader is somebody I'm going to attract. And this is what we've found. We've found that the first conversation has to be, why are we having this conversation? I'm busy. I'm doing things. <coughs> I, I, I got places to be, people to see. Why do we? Why do? Why are we having a coffee? Why do you want to sit down with me? Why, why is? What's? Why, is the first place, the conversation begins, and that's about the five pillars. We've already talked about this, a purpose-driven life. Everybody has five pillars, but does everybody have five pillars in balance? No. So all you have to find out is where they're out of balance, and show them that you have a way to help them go back into balance. And so that's the first conversation. Whether you do it on the phone or you do it over a coffee, it's the first conversation. Why? Remember, I'm talking about finding leaders right now, not customers. Customers, I wouldn't have this conversation. Finding leaders, I would. So if I have a person on my list who I think is a possible leader for my contact list, or if I meet somebody who I think is a possible leader, the first conversation I have is this one. Why? Why would you be interested? Let me talk about why I'm interested, and let's talk about balance in life, and let's talk about the things that are important, and see where you might be out of balance. You know what I actually do? I hold up one sheet of paper that has that five pillars on it, and I say, tell me, when you look at this, what two words jump out at me? And they will always tell me what is most important to them, or where they are out of balance. They'll say, family, finance. Oh. Tell me about family. Why did you pick that one? And they'll tell you. 
well, you know, I, I wish I had more time with my family, blah, blah, blah. Time, okay, so that's an issue. What about finances? Why'd you pick that? Well, you know, things are a little stressful here, and blah, 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 so you could use some more money and some more time. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? That would be a good thing? Perfect. I'm talking to the right person because I think I have a way. Now the next conversation. You have a way? How? Answer it. How? A company called Nikan. A vision that's inspired 40 years ago, blah, 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 you know the story. The Nikan story, complete with the products and the opportunity of network marketing. Now they're like, okay, hmm, that's interesting. Next conversation. So if I join you, what do I have to do to succeed? I am so glad you asked. I have a plan. And then you show them your plan, which is your launch strategy, etc. So that is the nature of the conversation. Give me a five minute count. We're at five? Okay. Perfect. I'll end on this slide, then we take a break. Okay. <clears throat> All right, process. process. So I have somebody who knows nothing. They're on a name on my list or a person I met. They know nothing. I want to get them to know enough that they say, I'm in. And when I mean I'm in, what do I mean? I mean I'm ready to launch your plan. I'm ready to do this launch plan. So they need to have enough information that they say, what happened to that bike? 